Okay, now that we have all our styling converted over to styled components, you may be wondering what the point of all of that was. It didn't really reduce the amount of styling in our app, and it also didn't make our app look any different. Well, in this video, we're going to learn about a feature of styled components that, in my opinion, makes the initial work of incorporating them into our app completely worth it. Since you're most likely very familiar with React by this point, you'll know that one of the main features of React is that we can pass props to components in order to configure them in some way. For our to-do list items, for example, we pass in data that specifies the to-do that should be displayed in that particular component. Well, one of the really nice things about styled components is that we can pass props to them as well and use those props to modify their styling and provide better visual cues for the user depending on the information we're displaying. So to show you what I mean, let's make some changes to the appearance of our to-do list items. You might remember from a previous video that the to-do list items that the server gives back to us, in addition to having a text property and an is completed property, also have a created at property that tell us when that particular to-do was created. So since we have access to the date that a given to-do was created, why don't we display to-do items that are older than a few days with a red outline or something like that, so that the user sees them as more urgent? Well, the first thing that we'll probably want to do is display the actual created at date on each of our to-do items, and we'll do that like this. Right underneath the to-do text, we'll say paragraph, and then we'll say created at, and then a non-breaking space. And then we're going to do a little bit of code wrangling here to get this date to display correctly. We're going to say, in parentheses, new date, to do dot created at. And then we'll say dot to locale date string with parentheses after it. And if we run our code, just to check that this works, we should see that our app now displays the created at dates for all of our to do's. And keep in mind that the way I created the fake to-dos on the server was simply by taking today's date and subtracting a certain number of weeks. So that's where these dates came from. They might be different from the ones you have. So now that we've done that, let's apply custom styling to older to-do items that should be displayed as more urgent. So here's how we do that. For this to-do item container component that we defined, we're going to want to pass the created at date into this component as a prop. So we'll say created at equals, and then we're going to pass to do dot created at. And now that we've done that, here's how we can use this created at prop inside our style component. Let's go up to where we defined our to do item container. And what we're going to do is add a border bottom property to the styling. What we're going to be doing here again is adding a red border to the bottom of any older to do items. And once we've done that, we're going to use this styled components props to decide what the value of this property should be. And to do that, we'll use string interpolation like this. Dollar sign brackets. And then inside this interpolation, we're going to create a function that takes one argument called props and returns the value we want for the bottom border. So what we're going to do is say new date props.created at is greater than new date date dot now minus eight million six hundred forty thousand and this is equal to one day in milliseconds so let's say times five so what we're saying here if you didn't quite pick up on it is if the created at date of a given to do is more recent than today's date minus five days and then we're going to use a ternary operator here to decide what the actual value of border bottom should be. So if it's a more recent to do, we're going to display no border. And if it's an older to do, we're going to say two picks, solid red at the bottom. And don't forget to add a semicolon. And I'm realizing right now that this prop that we're passing in doesn't quite match the name. It should be created at instead of create at. So if we correct that and save our app, and go back and look, we should see that our older to-do items now have this nice red border along the bottom to make them look more urgent. And again, the nice part about this is instead of having to include the logic down here in our JSX for deciding between different stylings, 
the logic's now pulled up into our styled components where it belongs. And this has the potential to really clean up our JSX even more. In a previous video, we added props to our to-do item container styled component to make it display differently depending on whether or not a to-do was older than a certain number of days. But here's the thing. Currently we're displaying it on all of our to-dos, the incomplete and the completed. Wouldn't it make more sense to only show that custom styling on the incomplete to-dos? Well, there are really two main ways to do that. One way would be to pass in another completed prop to our to-do item container styled component and use that as an extra condition for applying the red border. And that way is perfectly fine to use, but the other way is the way that I'm going to show you how to use in this video. So before we added this red border logic to our to-do item container styled component, it was just a typical styled component with no special functionality. Now one way we could go about adding the red border logic only to incomplete to-do items, the naive way that is, would be to simply copy and paste the styling and only have that logic in one of them. So in other words, we'd copy and paste all of this styling here and create a completed to-do item container without this border bottom property. Now, obviously this isn't really a good way to do things, since if we wanted to change the appearance of our to-do list items while still keeping them consistent, we'd have to make the exact same changes to both, which is a complete slap in the face to the idea of code reuse. So what we can actually do instead is extend our styled components in a similar way to how we can extend classes in object-oriented programming. Here's how we do that in this situation. What we're going to do is cut out this border bottom styling from our to-do item container styled component, and we're going to create another styled component called to-do item container with warning. And then instead of the regular styled.div syntax, what we're going to do is say styled and wrap our to-do item container. And then we'll use the exact same backtick syntax and paste our border bottom styling into it. And this basically means that this new styled component we're defining will start off with all the styles from to-do item container. And then it'll apply whatever styles we add here over the top of those existing styles. So once we've defined this to-do item container with warning styled component, which admittedly is kind of a long name, we're going to go down into our component. And inside of here, we're going to make it a more extensive body with a return statement instead of simply an arrow function. And then what we're going to do is above this return statement, we're going to say const container equals and then we'll say to do dot is completed. And then we'll use a ternary operator to decide between whether we use a to do item container or our new to do item container with warning styled component. So if it's completed, we want to use the regular to do item container. Otherwise, we want it to be to do item container with warning. And then here, instead of saying to do item container, we simply say container for what we defined up here, and container again. And now if we run our application, npm run dev, and refresh, we see that now the warning styling is only applied to incomplete to-do items. So that right there is just one example of extending styled components. Another place that we can do this, if you remember from earlier in the course, is with our buttons. Right now, both our completed button and our remove button share a good part of their styling. So what we can do is simply define a styled component called button, const button equals styled.button, and copy this shared styling into there. And then from both our completed button and our remove button, we can delete all this logic and simply extend the button styled component that we just created. Styled button. And we delete all this redundant styling and save it. And if we go back to our application, we see that it's exactly the same as it was before. So far in this course, 
we've learned about several very important tools in the React ecosystem that we can use to make the task of building large, complex React applications much easier. However, the one thing we've failed to discuss so far that may have occurred to people for whom testing is an important part of the development workflow is how do we go about testing each of these tools in an effective way? Well, fortunately, it's not only possible to test the main ecosystem tools, in most cases it's pretty easy to do so. In the videos that follow, we'll see how to test reducers, thunks, selectors, and styled components. We won't be covering how to test the React components themselves, since that's really a huge topic and honestly could take up an entire section or course on its own. And we also won't be testing actions, since in the way that we've written them, without any kind of logic whatsoever, they really don't require much testing. So before we move on to seeing how to test each individual tool, we're going to install two libraries that we'll use to run our tests, Mocha and Chai. These are two of the most common JavaScript testing libraries, and they're both super easy to use, so don't worry if you haven't encountered them before. So to install the libraries, we're going to run npm install dash dash save dev mocha and chai. And once we've done that, it's also important to install another package, npm install save dev at babel slash register so that our tests can run modern Babel code. And once we've installed all those things, inside our source to do's directory, we're going to create a folder called tests. And this is where we're going to put the tests for our different ecosystem pieces. Now, the way that we're going to run our tests once we've created them is by using an npm script. So let's open up package.json. And inside the scripts section, we're going to remove the pre-existing test script, since it doesn't do anything, and then add the following line. We're going to remove this and say mocha backslash quotation mark source slash star star slash star dot test dot js backslash quotation marks and then dash dash require at babel slash register dash dash recursive. So that's a pretty long command, which is exactly why we created an npm script for it. But now if we save this package.json file and run npm run test, we should get an error saying that no test files were found. And that's because, quite simply, we haven't created any test files yet. So let's move on to writing tests for the different pieces of our ecosystem.